We're here at the Business of Dentistry Conference in Las Vegas and at the Henry Schein Financial Services Dentalpreneur Conference. We're joined with Amy Morgan, CEO of Pride Institute, and in your case, I think CEO might be Chief Enthusiasm Officer, <laughs> who has spent her time with our group on leadership, managers, and entrepreneurs. So thank you for being with us, Amy. And in those three circles, being a manager, being a leader, being an entrepreneur, can a dentist fit in that circle together? Absolutely. And first, let me say it's a pleasure. Uh, what's really exciting is to see a group of, of dentists being inspired to even think about this, which is not common at any kind of trade show or CE, so well done to you as well. Um, and, and to answer your question, I think that it is important for a small business owner uh, to understand that you have to be more than just the clinician to be successful. So being able to, to break out leaders who are by definition supposed to be in front of their business, the dreamers, the possibility thinkers, um, the visionaries, the ones who create the culture, the excitement and the enthusiasm versus being a manager which is very much hands-on the organizers, the planners, the budgeters, the, the, can, the supervisors. When the dentists can understand that those are their dance steps, it's a lot easier to start to diagnose the situation and provide the right role that the person or the situation needs. Does, does that make sense? It does, but a lot of times the dentist is also the chief clinical officer and when they're you know, they can work with a great organization like yours and come up with a mission, come up with a vision, and it's true to their heart, but they're clinicians, but yet they're small business owners. Uh, they went to dental school. Very few have an MBA. They, there's so many great things to learn in dental school. They just don't have time to say, you're going to be a small business owner and employ 12 people, or why don't you take six months and do a separate uh, MBA program? It's just not enough time. So you have that mission, that vision, but how does a dentist get buy-in from their staff who may not be their peers on all different levels? Good point, and I don't think it necessarily needs an MBA because it, it's more of a commitment to understand that the success of the practice isn't necessarily generated solely by them doing dentistry in the operatory, which is very counterintuitive to the clinician, as, as you say. I think the biggest ice water dip that a dentist owner has to take is to get out of the operatory and provide those leadership functions, those management functions. So if you're talking about getting buy-in, um, you have to communicate to your team. And that's more than just a grunt as you're passing by them in the lab in the hall, formally and informally. It means that you know, one of the quotes that I shared today is there's a huge difference between a vision and a hallucination. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of hallucinatory dentists. And what I mean by that is they'll come to us and say, oh, my team knows exactly what my goals are, what my vision is. And you ask the team and they're like, yeah, not so much because A, we never see him. B, he's just droning on about who didn't turn off the air compressor. And C, we think he's just in it for the bottom line. So these are just classic classic rookie mistakes um, that are made with the, with the intention of if I'm just a really good clinician, that's enough of an example to set. But the leader has to be the mothership. And the mothership has to be a unifying vision where the team finds something in their own personal vision that gets fulfilled by following that mothership. That right, it does. But you're also talking about systems, kind of, and Pride Institute, you've got a great history, uh, and you're a systematic company. Henry Schein, we're a pretty big company ourselves, you would say. Mm -hmm. uh, we're so system-driven. We have redundancies on our redundant systems. But, hey, you know, typical dental practice, do they need redundant systems? Do they need systems to even get by? Well, if, not if at they, all. A lot of them say, you know, I'm booked out four weeks, so life is good. 
what do I need to focus on systems or you know, spend time when I could be doing more clinical procedures or other things with my time? Well, it, it, you have a good point. In systems, which is under the management umbrella, cannot replace leadership, which is the intangible. So for the subgingival, we don't say anal, we say subgingival, mm. Good micromanaging, one. Good one. get it, get it, micromanaging dentists, over systematizing something in the absence of inspiration is a sure way to create a, a, a flat and unhappy team. Because the first step is what we talked about today, is you got to grab the heart before you grab the head. And when I think about systems, and trust me, I'm a systems person, when I think about systems, is that they, they are the mind, they're the logic, they're the facts, they're the, the swim lanes that you want your team to swim in in order to have successful scheduling, financial arrangements, continuing care, yada, 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 yada. The first step is there needs to be meaning. And the meaning, the culture, the inspiration comes from a leader who has a North Star vision that not only the leader buys into, but is a vehicle for the followers to accomplish theirs. And, and, and that has nothing to do with systems and is honestly the step zero. And, and I know your company knows this because I know you're a vision-based, mission-based practice, a uh, business, so I know that, that that's something that probably yeah. resonates for you. So you, met, you mentioned some body parts, and we're going to focus on this, and because uh, Oral health, you can't have total health if you don't have oral health. But one of the things that the audience really was intrigued by when you were talking about a leadership spine, because you have to have a soul, you have to have a heart, you have to have a mind. But what do you mean by a leadership spine? I'm thinking, well, yeah, ergonomics are important because if you don't have good ergonomics for the doctor and the staff, you're going to have sick time, you're going to have, you know, an unhealthy office is not a productive office. So what do you mean about leadership spine? Well, you know, there's so much chaos that, that is, is part of a day-to-day -day running of a business. It doesn't have to be dentistry, right? It's any business. Is we know that the only theory that applies in any kind of management is the chaos theory. And we jokingly say the chaos theory means a butterfly flaps its wings in Japan and three of your staff members get pregnant, right? It's hmm. a, it, it, which I know is biology, but, but work with me, right? But the chaos is what happens is one of the reasons why dentists hide in their operatories is because they step out and they experience the chaos of the business and don't know how to line themselves up to the chaos. So when we use the analogy of a spine, is that you think about the head and neck anchoring the vertebrae, and the head and neck absolutely, based on what we're talking about, is the vision and values um, of that leader owner, the compelling magnetic future so bright that he or she's gotta wear shades, anchors that, which is the heart and soul of it, anchored by the vertebrae, which are the goals that you set to achieve the vision, otherwise it's just an empty New Year's resolution. I want to lose 25 pounds while I eat this pizza, right? Um, so you set the goals, which is if the vision or the head and neck is the why, the goals are the how, the general how, which then allows you to statistically interpret how you're achieving your vision, which then from a vertebrae alignment, so to speak, trickles into what do my systems need to look like in order to achieve those goals. And then finally, what we talk about the anchor vertebrae is your staff, specifically the knowledge, skills, abilities, and attitudes needed to run the systems to achieve the goals, to accomplish the vision. So it's more of, instead of a spine, we're much more interested in getting the doctors to line up to something more than because I said so. D does that make it, sense? It does. So you said skills. As a business owner, uh, I assume that you're a believer in continuing education across the spectrum of everybody in the office. Because one of my favorite um, authors, Tom Peters, is basically saying you have to invest in your team constantly. You either love them or they're, they're going to leave you. 
And are you doing your own continuing education, you know, in OMG. addition to advocating everybody else? Absolutely. I mean, there is no way that any of my team at Pride could be mentors, advisors, coaches, or consultants without our own mentors, advisors. I, and I know that at Henry Schein it's very similar because uh, continuous learners are, are the ones who role model for other continuous learners. So for example, when you say Tom Peters, is that his company that has lived on beyond him is Blue Point Leadership. And, and one of my favorite mm. new books by Greg Thompson, who's a dear friend of ours, is Master Coach. And when you talk mm. about giving skills to the team, there's a paragraph in Master Coach, because that's the latest book that I've read, so see, I do read, uh, is coaching is an act of faith in others. It's a sure, sure. deep belief that there's skill, talent, and ability sitting in each one that you touch, and your job as a coach is to give them the environment, the, the parameters, the resources, the training, and the practice to pull the very best out of them. And I do believe that's a fundamental job of you, me, all of the mentors in dentistry, and certainly the dentists who have to inspire their team because that's their greatest asset. Right. So you talked about some great stuff. And the road to success isn't always a straight line, and sometimes things don't happen when they should. And one of the, your sayings that uh, we really love is sometimes you have to, you, well, not sometimes, always, you have to break eggs to make an omelet. And I guess you're really proving that pretty well. Yeah. Well, it's it. when I go back to the chaos theory, you know, I, I, and certainly in our training, when you think about the stages of team development and chaos, right? is that you have to form the team to come to a new level of success through the chaos, which then leads to storming. Right? And storming is a team that change resistance is at its maximum. I mean, this is where there's anxiety, there's frustration, there's a dependence on leadership, but there's also a, 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 a neglect or, or, or a pushback on the leadership. And dentists who are conflict averse tend to try to avoid, and I'm saying this nicely, we called them Dr. Weenies um, this afternoon. Uh, when they experience storming, they feel like it's a failure, and that's the breaking a few eggs to make an omelet. A team in storming means that they are getting through their change resistance and getting ready to reform to a new and higher level. And you can't get to the innovation or the change without a little storming. So Dr. Weenies need to buck up and get a spine. Right? And, and by doing that, they will actually lead their team to norming and ultimately performing, which is where, where we want our teams to be. Got it. Thank you. So you've been great with your time, and uh, you we're talking omelets, so now we're going to talk food. You're now a West Coaster. You live in uh, California. You spent a good part of your life on Long Island in New York. I'm a Long Islander. I travel the country. And I must say that the best pizza is in New York, the best bagels. How about California? Is it any good? <laughs> is it any good? All right. So honestly, I'm a New Yorker by DNA. I will never under torture ever say that you can ever get pizza like in New York City. Now, I will also say the food's pretty good in San Francisco. And not only is the food pretty good, let's talk about our Golden State Warriors, our San Francisco Giants. We won't mention the 49ers. It's a deal. Okay. So th uh, thank you. We should have a uh, glass of Napa wine together sometime. And New York pizza. Yes, it's a deal. Thank you. Uh, this is Amy Morgan and Keith Dreyer for Shine Chats.